It's something that's really not taken that serious. So uh, I believe as a pastor uh, that uh, there's just a, there's an eeriness, there's an air of, uh, of knowing that there's an evil spirit, uh, particularly, I believe, the closer that you get to Salem itself. Not that we want to draw a lot of people here as tourists to uh, uh, find out for themselves, but uh, I believe that it, it is very much a, uh, uh, an hysteria that is still here. Have you had any personal experiences or ever met any witches, say, on a witnessing venture? Well, as a church, we believe in door-to-door uh, -door visitation. And uh, being that Salem is within two miles of our front door of our church, uh, we believe that we have a responsibility to reach uh, the city of Salem as well as we do our own city of Peabody. Uh, on several occasions, we uh, uh, have knocked doors in Salem. And uh, there, uh, on one occasion, about, uh, I would say, five years ago, I was out uh, knocking a door myself on my own. Uh, and I wouldn't encourage too many people probably to go out by themselves. Uh, but on one occasion, I knocked the, the uh, door of a first-floor apartment, of a three-apartment building, where a uh, woman came to the door uh, dressed in black, and she came with her daughter. Uh, the daughter came to the door with her, probably a girl around uh, 8 to 10 years old. Both uh, the lady and her daughter were, were dressed in black, and uh, black eye shadow, eye makeup, uh, and I felt like right away uh, that there was uh, not only could I tell by her appearance, but by the eerie feeling that I received, that there was something that was uh, uh, an unholy spirit that did not agree with the Holy Spirit that was in me. Uh, I began to witness to her, handed her a gospel track, and uh, uh, right away she began to comment on the fact that she did not believe uh, in, uh, in Bible religion, and she did not believe in being born again, and she was a practicing white witch. Well, I opened up uh, some scriptures in the Old Testament, and I began to deal with her uh, briefly because there wasn't, uh, she didn't allow me a whole lot of time to comment. I may have gotten out one or two verses on the fact that witchcraft is an abomination unto God, uh, whereupon she proceeded to say that she did not believe that and slammed the door. Uh, I uh, began to walk up the steps to the second floor door to knock it, I uh, went about halfway up the first uh, landing. I uh, knew that there was something uh, mysterious in the house. I could feel the feeling even out in the hallway. And uh, right away, my, my legs both felt like they had 10-pound uh, weights attached to each one, and I could not climb the steps any further. Uh, so I stopped, and I... I bowed my head, and I said, Lord Jesus, by the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command this evil spirit to leave. And as quickly as that happened, it left, and, and I proceeded on my way, knowing that, uh, that, uh, that I had met uh, a, a demon-possessed woman uh, that uh, was dealing, uh, as she had said, in white witchcraft, but I knew very well that it wasn't white witchcraft. All that you have seen and heard on this report is true. And again, it should be emphasized that it started right here with the slave girl Tatuba, who enchanted young girls with tales of black magic. It began simply with these girls trying to get some excitement in their lives. But ultimately, it turned into something much more serious than that. Thank you, Regina, for that most interesting report which shows what can happen when people get carried away dabbling in the occult. This is modern-day Salem, a community made famous around the world as being associated with the beginnings of American witchcraft. Today, most people in Salem treat this subject lightly, and in many cases, use it to promote tourism. There are many witches' museums and other historical sites, which many people pay good money to see. When tourists visit these places, they are asked to consider purchasing a variety of witchcraft trinkets, including dolls and other artifacts as souvenirs. Every October, just before Halloween, which is a sacred and important holiday for all witches, as we'll see later on, 
there is held the witch's ball. During this time of year, some people like to let their hair down, and there are lots of parties, which in itself is not all bad. However, what most of these people don't realize is that the forces of evil, demons, the witches, and other purveyors of the occult are all around them. Despite this, most of these people take it all in a jovial sort of way. We talked with one lady who was attending the witch's ball at the time, and she told us that she was having so much fun that she'd like to be a witch. Uh, tell us about your getup. Uh, are you inspired? Bail and his witches. So I decided to be a witch. Today, there are over 26,000 witches and witches' covens in the United States alone, including many so-called independents who study and practice witchcraft by themselves and who have never been part of a coven. We talked to an ex-witch, Mary Harold, who practiced alone, and she had this to say about how she got involved in the occult. At the age of 13, I asked Satan to have sexual intercourse with me. Now, you have to understand that was not an overnight decision or an act of impulse. I had premeditated the moment for many months, ever since discovering a book in my stepfather's library that dealt explicitly and graphically with sexual witchcraft in one of its chapters. But the book wasn't my... The book did not mark the beginning of my interest in occultism. It only served to harvest seeds that had already been planted in my early childhood. As a little girl, I was entertained and fascinated by the material in occult comic books, movies, television shows, cartoons, magazines. For example, I remember one episode of Alcoa Presents that dealt with the subject of extrasensory perception. It really enthralled me. It impressed me. And the Twilight Zone used to present stories about witchcraft. Those messages enticed me, challenging my sense of reality, stimulating my imagination, and certainly stirring my curiosity. They also caused me to seriously question my participation in and the validity of Christianity. By the time I was 13, I was completely disillusioned and embittered with Christianity and everything it represented. It's important for you to understand, however, that the disillusionment, the embittered feelings I was experiencing came as a result of not really knowing Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. You see, I knew about George Washington. I'd read about him in history books. I knew how he performed in the White House but I never met him personally. The same is true of my experience with Christianity. I knew Bible stories. I had read about the resurrection, the crucifixion, hundreds of times. I was raised in what you might consider a traditional Christian home. But I did not know Jesus personally in my heart. I was not born again. What are some of the dangers of being involved in the occult? A person can lose his or her mind. There are physical dangers of certainly being used as a sacrifice in an occult satanic ritual. There are the emotional dangers of losing control, of not being able to judge between what is real and what is false. It is an altered state of consciousness. An individual enters into a transcendent sense of reality where it is almost impossible to judge at times what is real and what is false, what is good and what is bad. There is a great danger in occultism so far as the eternal security of an individual is involved. The occult with its precepts of reincarnation, that is soul evolvement and transmigration, is a deception. It can turn an individual away from the truth of sin and judgment. It can turn an individual away from the truth of heaven or hell. That individual will get the idea that he or she can do anything desirable because the next life can make up for it. Yes, there will be karma to pay, but so what? There is 
a perspective that greatly varies from Christianity. 